So this is um, researchers say that current exercise guidelines are unrealistic, and this one, taking the stairs and getting off the bus to stop early, are more likely to help against heart disease and early death than working out. By which, of course, they mean going to a gym and sweating yourself silly. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm not, just to start off, uh, I'm not uh, against gyms. Uh, all human activity is good. It's better than inactivity. Mm. Uh, so even if someone comes to me and they work out in the gym, I would try to rehabilitate them through the gym and not through to, uh, some other exercise. I would always go with what they do anyway. But for many people, the gym is a psychological benefit, isn't it? Because they, they it's want got to many be. benefits, yeah. And for some people, it's quite the opposite. They don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't catch me near a gym. But I do, I like doing uh, resistance exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would do it at home against body weight or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this term, function size, up here. So this is something I tried to introduce into osteopathy, but it didn't take, out, it didn't right. take on. Right. Please <laughs> use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah. I tell the patients, yeah. uh, so they, they like to come out with an idea. Yes. So they say, oh, this is different. What, what, what do you do? Uh, well, I call it function size. It's using daily activity to get you rehabilitated. And so on. Because, as, and, and again, you, you point out in your book and in some of your slides that a lot of people only think of exercise as meaning dressing up in shorts and a t-shirt and putting a towel over their shoulders and going yes, to the gym. Yes, yeah. We actually got a few slides on that. Uh, I'll come to that in a minute. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so we know there is a problem that I've already stated, but there is a bigger problem that people don't know about. Uh, and it's a physiological um, training principle called specificity. Mm -hmm. So if you're a uh, sports science, you would know about it. Um, if you're a researcher into motor control, you would know about it. But otherwise, people don't know about it. And it might be hidden on purpose from us because it's very uncomfortable, this principle. Right. Uh, it sounds as though it ought to be simple and straightforward, specificity. Yeah. You basically, you only learn what you practice. Right. You can't learn what you've never practiced. It sounds sensible, mm -hmm. uh, but then we give people very crazy looking exercise to rehabilitate their walking or uh, get them uh, to play football again. Exercise that, that don't look like football. So you can see the problem because we are now using exercise that are dissimilar to the activity the person is trying to recover. Right. Okay. But what about those exercises where uh someone comes in, they've got a chronic low back pain, you do some work on them, and the exercises you give them are, um, I don't know, uh, cat stretches and yeah, supermans that, on the floor. Yeah, that's exactly the problem, because humans don't usually do that, no. unless they want, they seek out to do this kind of exercise, like in Pilates or yoga. Yeah. But most humans, you don't do that in your, I don't know, maybe you do. Um, no. In your bedroom when nobody looks? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the costume in the wardrobe, but other than that Superman. So. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to take you through this specificity principle mm. because it's really important um, to understand why functionality is so dependent on it. Uh, the whole idea of functionality uh, centers around specificity. Um, but basically, imagine that um, you decided tomorrow to start doing yoga. Yep. And you've done it for six months. After six months, you'd, your body will adapt uh, in order to optimize your yoga practice. So you look different, your muscles will function different, your motor control will be different, mm -hmm. your, you'll think differently, you'll feel differently. Everything about you will change. You'll be actually a different person. You might not realize that, but you are going to be physiologically, physically, mentally, whatever, a different yes. person. Now imagine that after six months of this, you think, nah, not for me. Let's do some weight training. Exactly the same thing will happen. The body ha adaptation is basically the body's way of preparing you for future encounters yes. with the activity so you can do it more optimally. So the same thing happens here. Does you that know, mean if she went on to do weight training and then went back to yoga, she would have lost the stretchiness that she had in the yoga? Or? No, that's not the point I'm trying to make. All right. Um, but it's a good, it's a good <laughs> question, actually. Um, you might have some remnants, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, then after a few months of weight training, you decided to do something like uh, no, marathon running or sprinting or something like that. And basically your body will do the same thing. And after that period of time, you'll be again, a different person uh, altogether. Now, the, the important thing is 
when you train for one of them, the gains, the training gains of, from that activity, the initial activity, doesn't transfer, doesn't carry mm. over to the new activity because it's a, it's a completely different demand on the body. Right. Okay. And so on and so forth. So what it means is that you need to be very, very, very close, very similar uh, to the activity you're trying to recover or enhance. How you, about how? the more you go, the more dissimilar, mm. the less likely it is to happen. So if you're yeah. doing, um, so I've got a slide for that for your question. So what you can see here, if you want to uh, improve walking, you can do a lot of this stuff separately. But ultimately, walking rehabilitates walking. There's right. nothing else. And people watching won't be able to read this, but the, at the top it says that what we're relying on here is a transference of this training into that That's training, right, yeah. and it's less likely than this one into that training. Yes, yeah. yeah. And the problem with the strength and conditioning, so let's say uh, you have a problem doing this. Mm. So and let's say we identify it as a false problem that you can't lift your arm up. So what happens is that in th strength and conditioning, that false component of the movement is then kind of uh, taken out of context, practiced somewhere else as a different exercise with the hope that somehow it will, we can transfer it back into the original stuff which was yeah. trying to do that. And basically when we do something like this, what we are telling the brain to do is do this. And get ready for doing more of it. Exactly. That's the, the whole nature of adaptation. If, if that, that wasn't the case, then we would have one universal exercise that will cure everything, right. which is strength, people think.